Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Kirsch One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Space Marines as we get into a specific campaign, The Siege of Dark and Vault. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K content every single day. And of course, if you have any suggestions, comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on The Siege of Dark and Vault. The Siege of Dark and Vault was a valiant Imperial military campaign fought by the Executioner Space Marine Chapter in defense of their twin homeworlds against the predations of an unknown Xeno species which nearly wiped out their chapter during the closing decades of the 39th millennium. In what is now a largely forgotten episode of the Imperium's history, the southern fringe of the Segmentum Tempestus was assailed by wave after wave of orc nomad fleets, Xenoform migrations, and strange psychic phenomena which themselves caused a near epidemic of witch cults, alien infestations, and demonic incursions. Seen now by some sources within the Ordo Xenos as a precursor to the coming of the Tyranids, these events were largely unrecognized at the time as forming a pattern, as the eyes of the Imperium were focused on threats elsewhere. Suffering severe attrition in a series of campaigns defending the Imperium's borders against invading orcs, enslaver outbreaks, and worse, the Executioner's Chapter had been reduced to less than 300 Battle Brothers when their first twin chapter worlds came under attack. The attackers were a nightmarish Xeno species of worm-ridden, writhing charnel feasters never before encountered by mankind. Again and again, they struck without warning, their strange, disc-like ships all but undetectable by the defenses of the Executioner's Fortress Monastery, Dark and Vault, until the last moment of their attack when their ghostly energy rays seared through tens of meters of asteroid mass in an instant to spill a tide of horror into the fortress's lower levels. The resulting battles in the catacombs at the heart of the Executioner's Fortress Monastery were unceasing and terrible, and in a short span of time, few space marines remained to defend the inner sanctum, and the chapter stood on the brink of extinction. It was the Astral Claws, supported by the cruisers of Battlefleet Tempestus, that broke the siege of Darkenvald. Their arrival came just as the last of the Executioners were gathering for a final stand. Many Astral Claws died in breaking the siege, and among their losses, they counted their chapter master, Seneca. The handful of Executioners that endured owed a blood debt to the Astral Claws for the salvation of their chapter, and swore that should the Astral Claws ever be threatened, they would respond in kind. It would almost be a century and a half before the executioners returned again to full strength as a chapter, and they would never forget their oath. When the time came, over 2,000 standard years later, they would heed Huron's call, siding with the tyrant of Badap and the secessionist during the infamous Badap War. And those were 40 facts on the Siege of Darkenvald. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a quick video. Um, if you guys have any other suggestions for other campaigns, battles, anything like that, uh, please comment down below. If you had a specific, um, you know, orc clan, or if you guys had a Dark Eldar craft world that had a pretty epic battle and you guys want to see a 40 facts video on it, just comment down below, we'll try to create it for you. Um, and again, thanks so much for listening. Enjoy your three-day weekend if you live in the States, and if you don't, well, just enjoy your weekend, I guess. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for everything, guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.